Well, howdy folks, Hulk Rex here, and welcome to Mercenary Thoughts from the Inner Sphere, episode 149. And today we're going to be talking about the Whitworth. That was, a, was not a bad mech back in the earlier days, when it was just operating against strictly Inner Sphere mechs, but now today, well, it has some problems. Alright, let's just talk about that Whitworth. The 40 ton mech that used to be eh, not so bad. The K, okay, the Whitworth uh, is a 464, has jump jets, so it's sort of mobile. It can get around and do a few things here and there. Uh, it has, like I said, it's 40 tons, has 128 points of armor, which is, I think, about a half ton, almost oh, about short of maxing it out. And it has a preful of some weapon systems. We have the LRM-10 in the right and left torso with a ton of ammo each. And it has a fire control system, Artemis, on board on each one. And it has a medium laser in the head with jump jets in the right and left legs. All right. So that's pretty much the Whitworth uh, summed up with what it has. It's has basically less weapon systems on board compared to what it used to be in the the Whitworth dash one this is a Whitworth dash two the Whitworth dash one had two medium lasers which they took two medium lasers and took the tonnage to put Artemis fire control system on it to try to bump up the amount of damage those two LRM tens do all right now the Whitworth in 39 era, I used to use it uh, pretty effectively in slower moving uh, type uh, lances where you have like uh, centurions, etc. Uh, mechs that are running around as a four, four, six movers. And it was more or less the cheap man's uh, fire support mech. You know, I will usually prefer to have a dervish over the, the Whitworth. But if I didn't have access to a dervish, I always took a Whitworth. Because back then, the speed of most mechs, you know, it's like uh, it's, you're getting into the scout mechs and those kind of mechs that weren't so fast. So a lot of times you can have one of these things and just park it someplace in the back and just empty out its uh, ammo bays. And then when it's done, it just turn around and walk off the board. Uh, nowadays, with the advent of the clans and all the new technology on board, the Whitworth has now been relegated pretty much to a backwater planet style uh, support mech or garrison mech for taking on insurrections where they don't have to worry too much about uh, opposing mechs because if you face this thing off against the clans this thing is toast and nothing flat just because it doesn't have really the speed to um, keep it alive because most time if clan mechs with their good gunnery and uh, mobility and excellent weapon systems they can turn around and just focus fire this thing down and turn it into a pile of scrap and nothing flat so that is the problem with it so it's basically like i said it's been relegated towards the rear with the gear now uh what can you do with this thing well this one with our, with the artemis on board it is def definitely a fire support mech and a lot of times it's like say you get this thing into like a city city fight or some heavy cover and i always like to use it for just park it someplace use it for fire support range out the weapon systems and now with just having a single medium laser in the head uh you definitely once you the ammo bays are dry on this thing you turn around and leave it doesn't have even the, the option because it doesn't have the uh, hand actuators anymore. Because uh, the way they designed, it used to have the medium lasers in each arm. And the medium lasers took up where the hands were. And obviously, 
with the design having been changed where they put hands on it you can't do even a snatch and grab with it so once the bays are done you are turning around looking for the uh, resupply truck to uh, fill this thing back up so it can go back to the front and that's one of the major drawbacks with the Whitworth is that it just it's staying power now in the game with the advent of all the new technology is it's not something that uh, you're probably going to want to take unless it's part of a scenario and it's like okay I, I'm stuck with this thing how do I use it and like I said it's like you use it fire everything off and then when it's done uh, lush uh, you're willing to once the ammo bays are dry uh, moving it forward and then using that single medium laser and going kicking you know start playing a soccer match and knock somebody's uh, block off you know it's like well they got their head knocked off we'll use it as a soccer ball so uh, that is one of the problems with the Whitworth it I want it to be good but it just um, like I said it's been relegated towards the rear and now if you get into some of those backwater planets where you might be facing off against some um, not so well armed pirates or raids or something of that nature yeah it works good it's not a bad mech for that role but if you try to stick it into uh, it's like trying to stick a square peg into a round hole you got to hammer it really hard to make it work and it's gonna have some problems doing it now there is some uh, variance with this thing we have obviously with the, the Whitworth Dash One, which had the same basic weapon systems except for two medium lasers. The uh, uh, it's not. Well, I guess I've seen a lot of different uh, uses over the year. Now there's the one uh, um, where they had, see the Whitworth Dash Zero, which was part of the Ameris. I should do some videos on uh, history of the uh, rising of the Star League sometime. But, all right, the uh, Whitworth Dash Zero had two SRM 6 uh, launchers on board, had 14 heat sinks, and had a flamer, one of the left arm, and these were painted matte black and these were the ones that loaded up with infernals and with the flamers it would just burn down it, they were terror weapons basically they'd go into a city and just obliterate it by burning everything to the into the ground lighting it up and then there's the 1s uh during the star league had two lrm10s and had 14 uh, double heat or 14 heat sinks and let's see that was pretty much it for that one obviously they probably with 14 I haven't looked and see what the if there's a let's take a quick look gander at it the book here two SRM sixes and four medium lasers four six four 14 heat sinks it could have probably gone with doubles on board and use some of the extra tonnage and nope it just doesn't have ferro or indo steel so that was pretty much the extent of it okay and then we had the whitworth dash two which we're talking about now and then there's the 2a which is an upgrade version which if you can get into six uh the year 68 take the uh the whitworth uh two alpha this one has endo steel on board and 10 double heat sinks that's a major improvement uh it has uh 10 double heat sinks has four streak fours and a c3 slave and case now one of the problems with this thing is it doesn't have the long-range weapon systems on board so obviously this has been relegated more or less to a knife fighter where it has to be inside a city or a very heavy uh, wooded areas where you know your line of sights are lots of hills and stuff so your line of sights are practically nil so that's the only thing it's the, the saving grace with that one 
but it does start using some of the, the nicer uh, higher technology to uh, get the job done so obviously you see with this one you have medium laser in right and left arm it has right and left torso two streak fours an S or an, a small laser in the head and a C3 slave in the center torso and 10 doubles now this, like I said this one works good this is actually becomes the sort of the eyes and ears of the follow-on forces because it's the short range stuff but it, it still falls into that problem where it's uh, no long-range weapon systems and it's slow so you face off against anything that isn't you know or is clan or anything of higher technology on board with better weapon systems it, it's not long for the world uh, it's going to be short term at best now if you're facing off against some low-tech stuff of that nature yeah this mech does pretty dang good all right it has some good technology on board has good armor okay and it's the speed isn't so bad but you know it's a backwater uh, backwater uh, mech now i like to take that one it's like later on i've used done this to it before reverting it sort of back to its original configuration but uh, i call this one the b2b version to be or not to be is replacing the medium lasers with er medium lasers so right and left arm had uh, er medium lasers you have an er medium laser in the head through ferrofibers on board it's still and then it has two lrm 10s for your fire support and it still has a c3 slave okay the whole purpose of this one is now it becomes part of a network so if you have a mech that has uh, a master on board and you throw it into the network this would can sort of become the fire support with the two lrm 10s and then it has the meet er medium laser so when someone comes in closer you can hammer them pretty good with those weapon systems out to a good distance and it has a double heat sinks also and with the slave then you can uh, basically link up together and hit with those lrms to good effect without having to worry about moving if you park yourself behind some cover or something or actually direct fire if necessary so that is basically what i call the 2b it's taking the 2a removing the streaks and get turning it back into its original fire support role but it has those er medium lasers that can reach out to a good distance and do some good work all right so it's not uh, weak up close and it's got some good firepower out to uh, distance for anything that you know you're relegated obviously back to a backwater planet uh, garrison types uh, force now uh, let's see we have the what's the next one 2a we already talked about that that was 2a's in 3068 that's when that hit the hit the market and 3069 we have this the whitworth dash three it's a variant produced in 69 with the compello forces once again using endo steel has four lrm5 so basically you can take the lrm10 break it down into lrm5 so you're actually still kind of doing the more same amount of damage but you're saving some tonnage there because it's one of the quirks of the game is that the LRM-5 is, you can put two LRM-5s on for the same weight tonnage as the LRM-10. And then you have a C3 slave, four tons of ammunition on board. Uh, okay, so if I remember, and then uses improved jump jets, which allows it to move a little bit farther, which is kind of a necessary to get this thing to move move around a little more quicker without having to change anything with the uh the engine now that one thing i haven't ever talked about you could possibly put a uh in 
or XL engine on board this thing. Increase some more firepower out of it. But at expense of, you're going to have to worry about not having the ability to uh, stand up very long. Because obviously with XL engine, this thing will die pretty quickly. Then we have the K uh, Kilo version. Uh, they we have from the Draconius combined. This came out in 3070. Uses a uh, 10 single uh, heat sinks. Obviously, uh, Draconius combined basically have some problem with not liking double heat sinks for some reason. But it uses MML sevens. Okay, so that's with two tons of ammo for each one. So that sort of gives it some possibility for it has good fire support and some stuff up close. And it uses a C3 slave sharing uh, for part of a system. It has improved jump jets. So once again, it's they're they're using the improved jump jets to give it some capabilities that weren't too evident before with uh, different kinds of uh, speeds when you're jumping. Now there's a custom variant, the 5S. Uh, okay, this was came out in 74, 3074. Uh, okay, this one has a supercharged extra light fusion engine okay a little more speed and then we have uh, two streak six launchers as case two instead of the case one so it's improved case and uh, to protect the mechs uh, ammo and then it has uses medium pulse lasers instead of medium lasers obviously with the XL engine you have a little bit more tonnage to play with and it has uh, ECM on board. And then they had, I think it was a targeting computer. So, yeah, that's not a bad little mech either. Now, obviously, it's an experimental version um, using a lot more of the technology to uh, make it useful. So, that is pretty much your your different versions on board that with this one uh depending on the era now if you have a original whitworth dash one you know with the two lrm 10s and the three medium lasers and it's a 464 uh two things i would do to this the mech first would be give it double heat sinks instead of the singles obviously because um, with two LRM tens and the uh, medium lasers, you could fire them all at the same time with the double heat sinks. And then if you jumped for some reason, you're only going up a little bit on the heat scale. If you ran, you're not to worry about heat at all. So it's one of those things where just throwing on some double heat sinks on the dash one makes it a better mech for being a fire support or fighting in close at the same time and if you could get your hands on the capability to put some ferrofibers on board eh, you would increase its armor some or you can keep the armor uh, levels similar and then use some extra tonnage to uh, play around with you can get an extra half ton here or there to now see what you want to do with it so that's a uh, couple options right there so just take a quick gander at that one and yeah if you did get it into 3050 era put double heat sinks on you still got 24 slots left you could put ferrofibrous armor on board which would give you a half ton and if you were able to tear this thing apart, if you had some type of way of uh, taking it to a shop and factory rebuild, you know, do the $6 million man uh, on it, 
it could use that half ton to throw in case on board if you wanted to for uh for that extra half ton and maybe throw all your ammo for both sides into one one torso that'll allow you to uh um protect it from getting totally nuked off the, off the board one way or the other so there's a couple options right there or if you didn't have the case you can uh, max out the armor with just using it, the uh, ferrofibers alone with that so you're basically running 137 points of armor so there you go there's your options with it it's not a bad mech as a second line mech uh, follow on force it definitely is not should be seen as a frontline mech by any means all right hope you guys like it uh if you got any good stories or anything with it like and share share with all your friends and hit the like button we'll talk with you later hell cracks out